Probably the single biggest historical regional event in Carl Halverson's life happened on October 12, 1918. The massive and deadly Moose Lake Cloquet fires burned an estimated 1,500 square miles. 38 towns and villages were destroyed and 453 lives were claimed, with hundreds of thousands of farm animals perishing as well. The $100 million fire was an event that Carl remembered vividly as an 11-year-old boy. Carl said he and his family heard the news from passersby on Highway 27 who painted a grim picture of the deadly inferno. And they started telling us, I always remember I stood there listening and thought how terrible that was. They said a tumble, Kettle River, Moose Lake, Waller, Kettle River, all of them towns had burnt, you know. Oh, ah, the whole country black as coal. Got black coal. Black coal. Yeah, and they came and told us that. And talking about all the people that burned us and they're 11 years old, listening to all that. What a terrible. Carl said one of the highest death rates occurred about one mile south of the town of Kettle River on Highway 73 at a point called Dead Man's Curve. That's a mile south of Kettle River. And they were going, I suppose, as fast as the cars could go in that thick smoke, one car following the taillights of the other. And they went straight off the corner into a popple wood and piled up there. Many cars, one on top of the other. Death loss was really heavy there. People ran from their cars into the wood, suffocated and burnt in all directions there. Yeah, there was George Munshock. He had a planing mill and a sawmill right where the Kettle River School stands now. And he drove his car into that, into that same mess. And he had started running and a couple hundred feet down is the Kettle River running, see below the curb. And he was falling on the, right near the river bird. Fortunately, Carl and the family homestead in Split Rock Township had been spared. His older sister, Cora Madsen, and her husband, George, concerned about the Halverson homestead, decided to make a 14-mile trek from Moose Lake to Split Rock to see how the family had fared. So they started out in the morning. Imagine drive up that four miles from Moose Lake to Hycolis Hill. Nothing but dead people and animals, wagon loads, horses dead, wagon loads of people burnt black in the ditch off the road, you know. Well, they got as far as the four mile corner. Cora was almost nuts already. He was just hysterical. Told George to turn back. Turn back. She couldn't stand it no more. So they drove back to Moose Lake. Interestingly, Carl said some people profited from the fire by turning in fraudulent claims. All of these that lost everything put in fire claims. Well, there were some that had nothing but a few log shacks, but there was no telling from ashes what they had. What was what? You know, so they turned in some awful big claims. Many of these farms right here in Split Rock built big houses and big barns because their claims were so big. And Carl said that Duluth was spared because many of the citizens there had heard what was coming. Seven o'clock in the evening, seven o'clock in the evening, the wind was standing right to the heights of Duluth. And they had all those damn people that volunteered to fight it. You went up there, up on the high parts, you know, and they fought the fire. You know, you go out of Duluth, then you get out of that big high and it's, you know, more level country. But they stopped it there, so it didn't burn any, uh, any buildings in Duluth at all. Carl said it was a lone, barren, plowed field that separated and saved the Holverson homestead from the inferno. A fire mostly blamed on a hot and dry October, sparks from railroad engines and faulty logging practices that had produced beds of dry wood scraps that acted as perfect kindling for a wildfire.